All right, so let's get started with Git. I've done a series already on GitHub and how you can do lots of stuff with that, but sometimes you want to do things from the command line. So I want to go through the process of Git itself and how you can manage a project with Git from the command line. So I have a folder that I've created here called Learn Git. This is going to be my project folder. I've done a listing of what's in the directory, so we can see all that's inside of there is the uh, DS store file that Apple created for me or OSX created for me in that folder already. Now what I want to do is I'm going to um, set up a project, just a couple of basic things just to have a few files inside of here. So I'm going to use npm init just to create a package.json file set up with the default. So yes, uh, that's giving me my package.json file. Uh, I'm going to add in a package here. So we'll do npm install, save it as a dev dependency. We'll do a cow say, which is a fun little package. There we are. If you want to see what uh, cow say does, you can run npx cow say and then write something. There you go. There's cow say. Cow say hello. Uh, just a fun little thing to, to have there. So we'll clear this off. We'll uh, list the contents of our folder. All right, now we've got a little bit of stuff inside there. I've got a few files. This is going to be my my folder, uh, my project. I'll put an index.js file inside of there as well. There, now we've got some files. Okay, now I want to turn this into a Git repository. So I've got my project. I've got whatever files are inside my project. I want to make this into a repository so that I can manage the changes. I can track the changes and then eventually push this up onto GitHub so I have a remote version of it as well. And that's the cool thing about Git is it's a distributed system. So you can have a copy. There's one on GitHub you can have or Bitbucket or some other repository and then you can have other people that have copies of it as well. And everybody's got their own copy of the project and a history of the project, the changes that they've made. So let's set this up. Git init. That's it. That's all we had to do. That has now turned this into a Git repository. Pretty simple. If I list everything now, you can see now there is a .git folder. If you look over here, you'll see D for directory. This is actually a folder and there's a bunch of files inside there. There's a configuration file. As you start adding things to your project, making changes, making commits, the information inside there will track all those changes. So this is something, if you ever want to get rid of your Git repo, all you have to do is delete that one folder. Gone. Repo, gone. But the rest of your files are still there. Now, first thing that I like to do after I've created a repo is add a git ignore file. The git ignore file tells git which files you don't want it to track. So things like DS store, I don't need that. Uh, the git ignore file itself. So we're going to create a git ignore file to give it a list of things to ignore. So dot git ignore is the name of the file. Touch is the uh, basic command to create an empty file. So I have a git ignore file. I don't want to have that one in my repository necessarily. Um, oh, actually, sorry. Yeah, the git ignore I will keep in my repo so that uh, if other people get the co the copy of the repo or the remote version of the repo is going to have this as well, so it knows to ignore these files. But I don't want the DS store and I don't want my node modules. If I need the node modules, I'll just reinstall them. I'll do an npm install and then have it read through the package JSON file and rebuild it. So. I'm going to use nano to edit my .git ignore file. So you can see it's just an empty text file right now. DS store and node underscore modules. So I want to ignore this file and I want to ignore that folder. Down here at the bottom there's the command so I'm going to exit. Control X. Y for yes I want to save it and this is the name of the file to write just down here .git ignore. There we go. Now, git knows in the repo that it's supposed to ignore DS store and this folder. Great. Everything else is going to be part of my project. All right. I will clear this off. Get a nice, fresh, clean screen. Our next command is git status. This is the one you're going to be using quite frequently on the command line because you want to know what things have not been added yet to your repo. 
So it automatically knows what files are inside the folder, but Git works in kind of a two-stage process. There's files that are inside the folder, so inside your project. Then there's a staging area, and then there's files that have been actually committed to the repo. So the staging area is, okay, I've done some changes to this, record the fact that I've made those changes, um, but I haven't officially added them to the full repo yet. Well, let's add them to the staging area. So git add, now I've got a few options. I could do git add period. That's a pointer to my current folder. Okay, that works fine. Dash A means all files, or you can individually say, you know what, this is the file I wanna add. Now if I do a git status, you can see that the index.js is now in the staging area, and the other files are still left in the old area. So git add, and then individual files, or a dash A or a period. So I'm gonna say git add everything inside there, boom. If I do git status again, there we are. Now everything's green, everything is in the staging area, ready, ready to be added to the actual folder. So let's do that, git commit. This is how you move things from the staging area over to the actual repo. So it's committed to the repo. Git commit, when you do that, you need to add a message. The message is something that's gonna be recorded along with your commit. So there's a unique identifying number for every commit. And there's also these messages that tell you what was done when you did that commit. And that's why we have this staging area. If you're working on something that's fairly complicated that uses many files, an HTML file, a CSS file, and a JavaScript file were all changed as part of an update, you're gonna move them to the staging area as you make the changes, but the commit will be done as a group. So all those things together, that's what makes up my initial commit. If I make changes to JavaScript and CSS that work together cooperatively, I may move them to the staging area independently, but I'll move them together as a commit. And there we are. So now the initial commit is done. If I do a git status again, there we are on branch master, nothing to commit, working tree clean. So I have now moved everything into the commit stage. We're good. If I want to see the details about that, git log will always give you sort of a running accounting of what's happened in your repo. So I've only made one commit. There's the unique identifying number. There's who made the change. There's the time and the date. And there's the message, the initial commit. All right, so we've created a local repo. We've added files to the staging area, and then we've committed them. So that's it locally. That's all we had to do locally. So we can quickly review the commands. There was git init to get it started. Git status always gave us the changes, what we're doing. Git add to add the files to the staging area. And then after that, git commit with a message. Those are the commands. Now, the next step is putting it up on that remote repo. So to put it up on that remote repo, what I'm gonna do, first of all, or what I have to do is I actually have to come up to GitHub and create the repo here because I need a place where I can put my repo. So I just want an empty shell, nothing at all in this repo. We will go to GitHub, log into GitHub, come in here, click on new repository, and I've done that, and I've given it a name, learn git, um, description option, there we go, sample repo for teaching how to use git from the command line. I'm not gonna bother with a readme file at this point, so I will create the repo. Boom, done. So I now have an empty repo, and we can see right here, this is the name of the repo. So it's the same as this, just with a dot git at the end of it. So if I take all that, I copy it. I am now gonna go back to my terminal. And what I wanna do is I want to tell my local repo that I've created, hey, you know what? There's a remote URL where you're allowed to save your files. So to do that, we say git remote add origin and then 
that URL that we took from the GitHub website. So git remote, add a new origin, this is it, boom. We can now, um, if we want to verify that we've got the right thing typed in at any point, you can say git remote dash v for verify. There it is. This is the URL that we're going to be using for fetch and push. Great. We can do a um, git pull origin master meant to push. <laughs> we're taking it from our local repo and we're pushing it up to the one that we listed here, this address right here. Oh, and we've got uh, invalid username and password. I changed my password just recently. So I'm going to close this window, reopen this, come back into here. Okay, so we're back into our folder. There we are. Now we're going to do a git push origin master. Hopefully this has picked up the new. There we go. Now it's prompting me for the new one because I changed it. So username. That's my username and then my password. There we are. And now that is uploading. Done. Okay, so let's come back over to our repo and we'll reload the page. And there we are. There's all of our files that have been uploaded to the repo. Now that we have something there and we've set up the password, let's do a git pull origin master, what we were doing before. And there we are. So up to date, we have one branch called master. We're at the head, we're up to date. And there we have it. That's the full life cycle. So that is creating a local repo, putting files inside there, setting up the git ignore file, adding the URL for a remote repo on GitHub, creating it on GitHub, and then pushing it up to GitHub. When you want to check for changes that have been made up there, we can do a pull to download that and see that we're up to date. And we can check git status over and over and over again. You always want to be doing git status to check and make sure that you've got things set up. All right, so I hope that uh, helps you out. If you have any questions getting started, feel free to leave comments, questions down in the comment area. Um, if you found that useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.